in a couple of months' time, I'm going to be going overseas. And before I did that, I thought I'd buy three new things. One was a new phone, two was a new compact camera, and three, possibly, a new laptop. However, after buying a new mobile phone, which is the phone I'm using at the moment, I've decided not to buy a new uh, a compact camera or a new laptop. And here's the reasons why. First of all, uh, my camera on my new phone is uh, quite a good camera. Uh, um, and just looking at this, this information here, according to, uh, on this web page, I called according to a recent report by Japanese news agents, Nikki or whoever that is, the compact camera market is just 3% of what it was at its peak, dropping from 111 million cameras in 2008 to just 3 million in 2021. If you look around, you'll find it's very difficult to buy a inexpensive compact camera, you know, around a couple of hundred, three or four hundred dollars. They tend to be at the higher end of the market. So that's one of the reasons I won't be buying it. Um, the other reason is simply because the new camera is just so damn good. All right. Uh, the the uh, cameras on phones. Here's my camera. All right, switched on. One of the things that you'll notice straight away is it's nice and clear. And you'll notice down the bottom here it's got X1. If I go on that and zoom in, I can zoom in on the camera up to 10 times. It's only a digital zoom, but it's quite a good digital zoom, simply because the resolution of the cameras are so high nowadays. Uh, when you zoom in, it's it's quite good. You can zoom in on something quite good compared with what you used to be able to do in the past. That was one of the reasons, main reasons of having a compact camera, because you've got an optical zoom. Nowadays, uh, this one's a, um, what's it called? A, a, a 50 megapixel camera, all right? Uh, there's a, if we go to 50 megapixel, there it is. I don't know. I don't think I can zoom with a 50, zoom is unavailable in this mode. Don't know why. A couple of little idiosyncrasies in that respect, okay? Um, the other thing um, you can do with modern phones too, which is really good, uh, is the modern uh, modern phone camera has usually all the same sort of features that were in a compact camera. For example, if I go into the pro mode here and see each of those things, which is uh, um, um, exposure compensation, I can go into that and make it brighter, duller or brighter. Easy. I can go to the ISO. I can go to the um, um, shutter speed and set it all the way up to one, uh, where are we going right up to a 30th of a second, uh, sorry, 30 seconds shutter speed. So you can virtually have the shutter open all, all the time. See how bright it's getting, all right? And then right down to very, very high speed, all right? White balance, uh, auto focus, all the normal manual features that you have in a um, an ordinary phone uh, in a um, uh, in a compact camera are now available in a compact in, in a in the phone setting. So that's why I'm not going to buy a phone. However. The next situation is uh, I wanted to be able to, I'll just see if I can swap cameras here. Okay. Um, okay, where is it? Um, I don't know where I swap cameras. I'll go back one. Okay. Back one. Okay. And somewhere in here, there's a thing to swap cameras because, oh, there it is. Swap cameras. So you can actually see me. The next thing I wanted to do was be able to buy, uh, as I said, a, uh, a computer. And I thought, why do I want to buy a computer? The reason I want to buy a computer is to get the photos from my phone onto a hard drive because I'm going to be away for an X number of weeks. So, you know, why? Uh, and, and not only photos, I take also a lot of video. So if I'm going to take a lot of video, then um, what uh, I want to, I want to uh, be able to get the video onto a hard drive. So the ideal situation would be to have a hard drive connected to my phone. That way I don't need to take a computer. I just do that. Well, apparently there is a way. I've known about this for some time. And it's a thing called OTG. I think it's called OTG. We'll just come back and I'll see if that's what it's called because I don't remember these things. All right. Um, uh, go to this page. Ah, yeah, there they are. Yeah, OTG. 
USB on the go, okay? Uh, O2G stands for on the go. Now, if someone told me what's on the go, you know, you should use on the go with the USB, I wouldn't have a clue what they're talking about. But basically, O2G on the go simply means that you can use the USB the opposite way that you normally do. For example, let's, in fact, there's a good article I found, and if I see if I can swap to it and find the article, it explains it better than what I do. I don't know. And I can read it out, perhaps. Uh, where are we? Uh, yeah, OTC on the go. What is USB OTG and what can what can it do? Okay, so it says USB OTG on the go, which means nothing to me, is a powerful feature of many Android smartphones and tablets. Learn how to take advantage of it today. A tiny change makes a difference. It says typically USB works on a host client basis, also known as master slave. This means that the host device, let's say a PC, is in control of the peripherals, clients connected to it. Uh, it has the drivers and the uh, software to understand the peripherals and access their data. That's why when you connect your Android device to your computer, it is detected as a mass storage device in the same way as a USB stick or a portable hard drive would be. This also explains why you can't connect two peripheral devices together. One has to be the host. USB on the go, and this shows a bit of a diagram here showing how the wiring done on the USB on the go, uh, is different. With a tiny wiring change in the cable, your Android device, which is usually a client, can act as a host, allowing you to attach a wide variety of peripherals directly to your Android and access them in the same way as a laptop or PC would. So that means what I want to do is have was my a hard drive connected to a PC, I want the hard drive connected to my phone. Am I able to do that? And this goes on to explain what the sort of things it can do. I'll put a link to this article later on, but it shows you some of the, the things that you can do with a OTG connector, right? And I'll show you what, what one of those is in a minute. For example, you can connect a keyboard and mice, which I'll do in a minute, game controllers, USB sticks and memory cards, Portable hard drives, now this is interesting, portable hard drives which have their own ex external power supply can work just like USB memory sticks. But if your portable hard drive needs power from USB, it probably won't get enough juice from the Android to operate. Well, I've since found that not to be the case because I'll show you if I click plugging in a four terabyte hard drive in a minute. USB hubs. Now, if you didn't have enough power to your, um, uh, to run your hard drive, you can plug in a U powered USB hub and plug portable hard drive into that. Obviously you can do cameras, but here's another one which I haven't tried out yet, which is interesting, other phones. Sure, you can totally connect another phone to your O2G host and access its files just like a big smart USB stick. So if you want to get files from one phone to another, just get one of those little connectors and an ordinary cable that connects them up and you can transfer the files from one to another. Also, Earth Ethernet adapters, haven't tried that one yet. I've got one somewhere hanging around, so I might try that out. Uh, musical instruments, um, digital drawing tablets, uh, web cameras. All right, so let's have a look at what these devices are. Okay, so um, I will quickly go back. I think I've got some, um, yep, web page up of some of these OTG devices. I bought one recently at about that price. I think I paid three or four dollars for it. Don't know. A dollar sixty-eight you can get them for, right? Okay. A dollar fifty-eight, etc. You can buy a whole, a couple of them for ten dollars, eleven dollars. You can get them in the form of a cable. You can also get them in the form of split cables, like these ones here, where it goes to both a um, micro US, uh, a USB C or a micro USB, and you can get them in different combinations. But anyway, to show you the one that I have, all right, I'll switch, switch my camera on again. Okay. Okay. Switch the camera on. Okay. Switch over to the other camera. And this is the one I have plugged in the bottom of my phone at the moment. I just unplugged it from there. You'll see it's a USB-C, right? Or you can get them with an ordinary USB-B, whatever it is, all right? And at the other end, it's a... Uh, normal USB socket where you plug something in. 
So you plug this in the bottom of your phone and then you plug the cable from a hard drive, example, that cable there, right? Or a mouse, a mouse, that cable there into the end. So that's what I'm going to do with a mouse to start with. So I'll quickly switch the camera off. Okay, back, back to here. All right, come back to that screen. Plug it in. All right, plug it in. Hopefully it's just going to work. So I'm doing a video and I'm plugging in the mouse to start off with. Okay. Right now. I'll plug it in and I can't I can't share. I haven't got the camera on, but you'll if I move, move the mouse around, you'll notice I have a mouse pointer on my phone. All right, a mouse pointer on my phone. So you can click on things. For example, if I want to go into my calendar, I can go into that. All right, I'll come out of my calendar, go back. All right, if I through the mouse wheel, it jumps from one screen to another, and there's probably lots of other things I don't know how to do, all right? So you can plug in a mouse, that's the first thing. The second thing is you can obviously plug in a keyboard. So um, I'm not gonna plug in a keyboard. Um, so you could plug in a keyboard if you're doing a lot of typing, you could just plug a keyboard directly in and away you go. But the thing I'm more interested in is plugging in the hard drive. So what I'm gonna do now is plug in a hard drive. So I've got a now, I'll quickly show to my camera, camera again, okay. There's a four terabyte hard drive, all right? A four terabyte hard drive, I've got a label on it to say what it is. Also, I've got another 128 gigabyte SSD drive there as well. So there's my four terabyte hard drive. So I'm just going to plug that in and see what happens, okay? So we'll come out of the camera, back to the thing. I'll plug in the hard drive, let's see what happens. Plugs in and first thing comes up with and says, choose an application for the USB device. And I'm going to say CX File Explorer, which is the one that I use, and just once. Okay. And in a minute, the light's flashing on the hard drive. All right. And there it is. It says KS Photos. That's my daughter Christie's photos. So if I now touch that, there we are. We'll see up the top here. It says 2.2 terabyte of 4 terabyte has been used. So it's a four terabyte drive. However, there's a slight problem. I can go into any of these files and look at the, fi the files and open them up. However, if I want to copy a file from my phone to that four terabyte hard drive, it won't work. I'll show you what happens. I think I can see what happens. So if I go to um, my SD card, I'll go SD card. There's some temporary files, a couple of photos. I've got whoop. There's some stuff I copied the other day. I copy these four photos, right? I'll say copy it. Right now. I'm going to say where does it want to copy to? Uh, go back to the main thing. Go to that drive. Okay. Put it. I'll put it in alarms. So I'm going to say paste. <laughs> Make a liar of me, won't you? It worked. Why? I don't know. When I tried this last, the other night, it wouldn't work. <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is simply because um, phones don't, uh, uh, portable hard drives typically uh, formatted it as uh, um, oh, the Microsoft format. I don't know what it's called. Uh, um, oh, I forget what its name is now. Um, the Microsoft uh, hard drive format. Whereas, um, um uh you uh, android doesn't support that format normally i don't know how come this is working anyway <laughs> well it's news to me i can take this portable hard drive with me and write up to another two terabyte of data onto it all right anyway just to prove um other otherwise is the the case um i, I thought well if this wasn't going to work how else can i do it now my little, uh, and by the way, just another thing, I just come back out of that, all right? Okay, uh, back to there, home. If I do a long press on that, in this particular a thing, and go into settings, I can actually eject the hard drive, okay? Eject it, okay, and now it's disconnected, all right? So if we go back and I show you the photos, the camera, uh, the light's still on, all right? And when I unplug the cable, the light goes off. All right. So it means I had a four terabyte hard drive. I don't know 
uh, what size. You can, but it, it, by the way, a couple of things. <laughs> One is you don't believe everybody what everybody tells you. First of all, it will. There is enough power on a modern phone to run a portable hard drive. And secondly, it seems that NTFS is what I was trying to think of. NTFS does actually work. However, all of this is a little bit... Um, uh, took me a while to get to this particular point because last night when I first got this little plug, I plugged it in and I just plugged in a keyboard, didn't work, plugged in a mouse, didn't work, nothing worked, all right? So I thought, oh, it doesn't work, you know, it's a dud one, whatever. So I then decided, okay, I'll try it on my old phone. I tried it on my old phone, it did work. So I plugged it in, a, a, a thing, a, um, what's the name worked? A, uh, um, a uh, key, keyboard worked, hard drive did work, but then the hard drive that I plugged in wouldn't allow me to write to it, all right? It just did nothing when I tried to write it, okay? However, when I tried on this this phone, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? So I looked all over the place. I looked, you know, went onto the internet, searched everywhere on the internet for why the uh, hard drive possibly w uh, w wouldn't work and I got a whole lot of reasons and a whole lot of things that tried. I tried it, didn't work. I did find one person, though, that had a situation where they said, Roddo, um, you, what you need to do is look at the, uh, uh, it said something about, oh, looking for a, uh, what was it? Oh, I want, I want that someone said, I, I don't, with the new version of Android, Android 13, and that's what is on my new phone, Android 13, it won't, uh, I, I have to, uh, something wouldn't work, and I have to go through the settings to set it all each time. And it was with OTG. And I thought, oh, what's the setting with OTG? So let's find out, okay? So I, what I thought do I do, I go into um, uh, my settings, okay? Went to settings, all right? And in settings, there's a, a search thing. So I typed in OTG, all right, which I typed in earlier, all right? And it comes up, OTG, when enabled, your phone can be connected to... Do, do, do. So I touch that. There we are. It's under Bluetooth and devices. So under Android 13, right, you've got a thing called Bluetooth and devices. And if you scroll through the list, you get a list of all the things that are there, right? One is OTG. So if I was looking at that OTG, it would mean nothing to me. However, if I read it, it says, when enabled, the phone can be connected to a flash storage drive or charge another device. So that's another thing it can do. You can charge another phone. The OTG function will be disabled automatically if not used for five minutes. So that's another thing. If you don't use it for five minutes, this little switch here goes off. There we are. If I do that, hmm, it goes off. All right. Um, but apparently, if you don't use it for five minutes, it goes off. So even though if you switched it on and then later on went to use it, it probably wouldn't work. So I'd have to turn it back on again. Okay. So that's the thing I find slightly annoying about um, new versions of software when they come along. They keep on adding more, they, they add more features and then they switch the features off and you've got to switch them on again. If you don't know what the feature is or what it's called, like uh, on the go, that's what OTT stands for, on the go, on the go doesn't give me any indication whatsoever that I'm actually um, wanting to uh, store stuff on a hard drive. Okay, I'll have to play around with that hard drive and see how much data I can uh, st uh, add to it. And also, I wonder how long the power would last repairing that hard drive on my phone. But there we are. I can uh, st store information uh, going out. If I go overseas, I can take lots of video, lots of photo, put it onto a portable hard drive, and I've got it stored. However, I just the other thing too is if um, I, when I am out and about, I can virtually... Be, uh, but because I have a um, uh, a server, I can actually copy files from my phone to my server from anywhere in the world as long as I have an interconnect connection. However, that's rather slow. It'll be interesting to see what the speed difference is. I've got some files on my phone now. I'll do a, a test in a minute. If anyone wants to know, they can email me as to uh, what um, how fast it is copying it over the internet as opposed to how far it is copying directly to the hard drive over the um, USB cable. I imagine the USB cable would be a lot faster. Okay, that's it. If you want to know any more, uh, email me. If you want to know how to email me, my email address is on my website. My website is, 
here if I can call it up. Um, rig.net.au is my website. Okay, there's my email address there. My website is simply greg.home.ip.net. Go to that, you'll find all about me, how to contact me. There's my email address if you want to contact me. Otherwise, you can do that. So please do so if necessary. Bye.